the Diamondback. He may land somewhere else. But Barry Enright takes the spot for Aaron Heilman. And on the roster, Enright goes to work. What does he have to do to be successful? Well, I think what he needs to do is bring the confidence that he had in Reno. Eight and two in Reno. I think he needs to bring that confidence up here to Phoenix, Arizona. Barry Enright has had success in the major leagues. We saw it last year. And he's also had trouble in the major leagues. That was in April of this year. What he needs to do is mix those two together and learn and bring it to the bring it to here tonight against a Brewer team that's ready to open up. It's funny, his battery mate Miguel Montero was talking about the very same thing. Miguel saying the confidence is what waned when he came to work here in the big leagues this season. So Barry Enright goes to work. He's got a shot to grab a spot in the rotation. Like Kirk Gibson has said everything, it's up to him, though. If he can get the job done, Enright can stay in the big leagues and he can continue to keep the Diamondbacks in a pennant race. More on Barry Enright with Brad when we come back. Start at any Gila River Casino and you can win up to $20,000 right away. Right now, get the Jack in the Box, where for a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich, it's back. And it's only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. Southwest Airlines, new rapid rewards. Unlimited reward seats with no blackout dates. And welcome back to Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Tonight, the D-backs looking for their fourth straight win. Game two of this four-game series against the Brewers. It also marks the return to the major leagues of right-hander Barry Enright. His first start up here since he was sent down to AAA Reno after struggling to start this season. And really, when he went down to Reno, a great attitude. Wasn't really necessarily working on technique. It was more of a chance to kind of get some confidence back and kind of hit that refresh button. Talked to a lot of the guys on the rotation, Daniel Hudson, saying they really stayed in touch and didn't talk a whole lot 
lot about baseball. It was more about getting his mind right. He really took a lot of uh, blame early on this season. But, uh, you know, the thing I think we learned about Barry last season was his ability to make changes not only within a game, but also between starts. And I think that's what he did down in Reno. A great attitude. And tonight he'll get his chance for his seventh start of the season. He'll certainly hope to get some offense as well. The D-backs have been using the long ball as of late. And Ryan Roberts has been the guy providing most of the fireworks. Holy long ball tap man. The D-backs and the Brewers. It's game two. Darren and Mark have a call on Fox Sports Arizona. It's headed your way next. Field a very comfortable 75 degrees indoors hot outside been hot through the night as well here in the desert certainly glad Gracie and I to have you with us Brad as well in our production team Ron Renicky longtime bench coach and coach under Mike Sosha in Anaheim earning this opportunity for the first time let's take a look at Ron's starting lineup Renicky born and raised by the way in Cabina California at the top of the lineup it's Corey Hart he flip flopped with Ricky Weeks a couple of games back. Ryan Braun is back into the lineup. May not play the entire game. That calf feeling better. Casey McGee had a quiet night last night. Enjoys his ballpark in his career. And Giovanni Gallardo can hit. Simply put, he can hit, and I mean homers. Barry Enright is back in the major leagues. Enright this year in AAA in 12 starts. As you mentioned, was 8-2 with a 4-2-9. Our Ford numbers brought to you by our Arizona Ford dealers. You see a six start run for Enright in the major leagues. One victory, and that was his best start. It was April the 28th against the Chicago Cubs. He pitched in the seventh inning and gave up two runs. It was an 11 to 2 win. That was the finest hour this year for Enright. No question. Now he gets a new lease on life. Called up here right after the All Star break, and he hopes well, to stay here. And it starts tonight. The right hander out of Stockton, California, went to Pepperdine and he fires low in the strike zone. That's strike one to leadoff hitter Corey Hart. Strike one key, and that's what Montero talked about before the game. As that one is inside and off the plate. Miguel saying last year, Enright had a good sinker on occasion. He said he would be able to sink it down, get ground balls. He said he really doesn't possess that. It was only on occasion. He said, I just need him down below the knee. Says that one has some movement, but it's inside. Two and one the count to Corey Hart. All the secondary stuff. Slider, curveball, change up. But he just needs to get ahead and needs to keep the ball down. And unfortunately, he starts three and one on the very first batter in a very long time at the major league level. 
three and one the count on Corey Hart. Moved to the top of the order on Saturday and has stayed there ever since. High fly ball, well struck left field. Corey Hart, leadoff hitter, leadoff homer. The third career leadoff homer for Corey Hart. And the first time he has done it since 07. Number 13 on the year. Well, Hart likes batting leadoff. He told us yesterday. We can see why. And Barry Enright just cannot live. Look where the glove is right there. Now watch where the baseball goes, folks. Oh, dear. That's what happens when you're three and one at the major league level, Barry Enright, and you throw an 87 mile an hour fastball down the middle. Look out. High fives all around in that dugout for Hart. Well, what you hope that is for Barry Enright is a wake-up call. That's what you hope it is. Nigel Morgan slaps it in the left field for a base hit. So Morgan, who has been more than a pleasant surprise for Milwaukee, shoots it the other way. Braun ready to hit now with Para Young Upton in the outfield. He's a fly ball pitcher as Enright. Infield of Roberts, Drew, and Johnson. Both the middle infielders sat out last night with Allen at first. Miguel Montero catches Barry Enright. Roberts at the leadoff spot. Drew and Johnson, both spectators during the victory last night with Allen at first. Well, he's back, and he's back in the lineup. We'll see if he plays the entire game with some marching orders from his manager. That calf continuing to bother Ryan Braun, and Ron Renicki had some words of uh, advice for him, didn't he, Gracie? It just, he just told him that, and this is hard for a guy like Ryan Braun to do, but just don't bust it when you don't really have to. In other words, if you hit a routine ground ball, just go 50%, 60%. And if you hit a gapper, Stop at second base. You don't need a you don't need a triple. That's very difficult for a guy like Ryan Braun to do. He's an all-out guy. He's a guy that hits a routine grounder short. He's busting it to first base. If he hits a ball in a gap in left center, right center, he's thinking three. But boy, what an offensive force he's been since he's been in the big leagues. He's always used that big baseball bat as he takes a pitch that is high and his power. A lot of folks have seen him. But just to remind you, his power is all over the ballpark. He was the number one vote getter in the National League, headed to Major League Baseball's All Star game here at Chase Field, unable to play because of that calf. He came out, though. He came and thanked the fans, actually thanked them for their votes. He told me before the All Star game, I wasn't about to miss this opportunity. Breaking ball, and it's a strike, one and one the count. Something that about the matchup, the long balls have been there, the RBIs have been there, but something about the matchup, Arizona's been able to at least hold him down in the batting average category. And that's, if you've held Ryan Braun to below 200, you've done something. Very well said, because this guy is just a machine. High fly ball, well struck left field. Ryan Braun is back. Be easy on a calf trotting around the bases. And Barry Enright probably couldn't start it any worse. Three batters, three runs. Let's see how it all started. Those fastballs thigh high. And these Milwaukee Brewers, they know what to do with them when you make mistakes. Oh, by the way, Prince Fielder's up now. Morgan in front of him with a single. Now here is Fielder. 22 home runs, 73 RBIs. Now, a reminder. Arizona has won three of four ball games this year against Milwaukee. Ryan Braun has not played a single inning in any of those ball games. Oh, what a difference he makes in this lineup. This is a, it's, it's a rather eh, mild lineup without Ryan Braun now. You have to you have to pitch to Ryan Braun because you got this big old beast that's sitting in the stand in the batter's box and Prince Fielder hitting behind him. 22 long ball slugging 572 as impressive as his on base at 421. 
Prince with a big swing and he fouls that one back. By the way, for Braun, that is home run number 17, RBIs number 63 and 64. And though he does have what is deemed a lower batting average against Arizona, he has hit five homers now against the Diamondbacks. Fielder waves right through that well-located fastball. Now, a better spot for that one. I mean, a better spot. That one out across the other side of the plate. Let's go pitch by pitch again. Change up for a strike. And then you throw. That's what he needs to do. Use that fastball in. And then he just surprised him with another fastball. I think Fielder probably looking for something off speed, but was well located on the outside corner. So finally, out number one. One out, Ricky Weeks digs in. Weeks, as we mentioned, flip flopped in the order with Corey Hart in that five slot. Before Hart hit that homer, Hart had not been feasting, but the sun had been shining on Weeks. He just loves hitting fifth. Loves hitting behind Prince Fielder, as he said it. I love hitting when there's guys on base all the time. Good, tight breaking ball again. Started it away, disappeared. 0-2 the count on Ricky. Ricky was 0 for 3 last night, just 4 of 19 on the road trip. But late game homer in Colorado made a difference on Saturday night. A two-run homer against Houston Street in the ninth inning. Bounces that ball out to Roberts in between hop. And an in-between scoop over there at first, too. Everything in between, but you know what? An out is an out. Ryan made a nice play on that ball, though, he on the back. Backed dig. up, and then he got caught in between. He ends up making a nice play on the in-between hop. And then Brandon Allen got handcuffed over there as well. As you see the pickup on the in-between hop, and then Brandon Allen on the other end. Casey McGee had an 0 for last night. He digs in. His counterpart Roberts made a nice play on that one. But McGee still 11 of 25 career in this ballpark. As that one is just off the plate, 1 and 0. And folks, you won't be hearing anything from our telecast, from this announcer anyway, maybe from Gracie, from Casey McGee anymore in this series. He has banned well, me from his locker. You've been yelled at by Casey. The 1 0. Swing and a miss at a good breaking ball. I mentioned to Casey yesterday, you know. Well, you're that guy. I understand. Fair enough. You've hit really well in this ballpark. I mean, 500 in this ballpark. He said, go away. Don't be telling me that. I said, well, Casey, you do. And I knew him back from my old job, obviously, with Milwaukee. Yeah, you, you slapped the Moa Chichi right on him as he goes 0 for 4 last night off of Josh Cole Metro. Walked up to his locker today, and I was told, step away. <laughs> I won't be speaking with you. Two and one the count. Good for you, Casey McGee. Get him out of there. Big swing. And I obviously kid. He was giving the business. The one thing he did share with me is a lot of respect for Josh Colmenter. And deservedly so with what Colmenter did. He said if he can just get something to go to the left or the right, mm -hmm. to sink or to cut, anything, he said he's really going to be tough. But already he described, and so did Prince Fielder, his changeup as almost like a knuckleball the way it comes to the plate. Just, just doesn't dying. get there. Yes. Yeah. Just never gets there. These Brewers, you know, they're throwing out a compliment to a pitcher. They don't do it very much because they like to back leg it and swing oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. They don't much like pitchers. Yeah, they're not into productive outs and bunts. They're into three run homers. Hot shot right back through the box. And unfortunately, now we'll be able to hear from Casey McGee. And I say unfortunately well, no. because he got a hit. I was going to say he's probably going to keep you away from his locker. <laughs> Mary Enright getting hit very hard here in the first inning. Boy, thigh high, outer third. Ineski Betancourt starting to hit a little bit more, hitting close to 290 over the last month. Diamondbacks have held him in check though. He is only one for 11 against Arizona this year. Breaking ball a strike. Montero couldn't hang on. 0 and 1 the count. You know who's still hitting by the way? We were in Kansas City a couple of weeks back. The Diamondbacks were folks and Alcides Escobar was hot. The player that was traded for Betancourt and Granke mm -hmm. from the Brewers. He's still hitting. He's going about Five weeks now hitting about 330. Right. 
Miguel Montero got a bit of a. I think he's using that. Uh, using boxing gloves back there. That's back to back balls. He's just flat out dropped. <laughs> he's looking at the gloves. I think he's the... using the Sugar Ray Leonard model. Yeah, you see, he's saying I'm using boxing gloves. <laughs> Matty Williams was giving him the business. Hands out by his side. <laughs> using that Ernie Shavers model. <laughs> one and one the count. Now the boy Miguel. 26 pitches here in the first inning. Couple of outs. A strikeout to fielder and a ground out to Weeks. Enright making his 24th career Major League start. Right back to the screen it goes. And in Major League start number 24, he is now allowed. And it's been his kryptonite. It really has. He's now allowed 29 home runs. In those 24 yes. major league starts. And that's a number that just has to be taken care of. If he wants to continue to pitch at the major league level, he's got to find a way to keep the baseball in the ballpark. That's going to be a souvenir down below. So two and two of the count to Betancourt. This is a four game series between Gibson. And his Diamondbacks and Renicky and his slug and Milwaukee Brewers. And the funny thing about it is this Brewers and their reputation and the way they slug the ball have the same slugging percentage this season as the Diamondbacks, which to me is surprising. The 2 2. It's coming back our way, but it ends up down below. So we'll do it again. A breaking ball that was up. Lucky he got that one back. And I say that it's only based on reputation only. You can just sense that Ryan Braun loves being the bodyguard of that lineup. He and Prince both. Oh, sure. Out front, lifted down the left field line to the corner. It goes another. today. Look like Taiwan back in the 70s Little League World Series. Works five nothing. Bobby Freeman doing the best he can here in the first inning. Bobby Bobby's fingers are going to be sore by the end of this one. That a boy, Bobby. Good job. This is the first time, unfortunately, a Diamondbacks pitcher has ever allowed three home runs in the first inning. It's the seventh time that three home runs have been allowed in any inning overall. And the bullpen is rang and well, there's well, some guess irony who. in that, huh? Exactly. I guess mean, some real who. irony in that. The guy that Barry Enright was brought in to replace in the starting rotation is now getting up to throw in the very first inning. One and two the count. Jonathan Lucroy fouls it off. Seven long balls, 36 batted in for Lucroy. 
The more he hits, the more he plays. Broke his bat, fast ball in. The funny thing is, for obviously the Diamondbacks' perspective, this is tough on Enright. For Ron Renneke, he's thrilled to see this, and I'll tell you why. His club, Jekyll and Hyde, between hitting at home and hitting on the road, winning at home, winning on the road, he hasn't seen any sort of offense on the no, road. Not at all. Boy, when was the last time I would imagine Ron Renneke saw a five-run lead? On the road, probably hadn't been. A, it's been a while. So that one's ripped into left for a base hit. Base hit left field. Jonathan Lucroy. Just before you you rest easy, and you think, well, the pitcher's hitting. This is good news. He's got a homer this year. He's got nine homers in his career. Giovanni Gallardo. He can hit. Oh yeah, he's a very good hitter. Boy, you just feel for Barry Enright out there. Well, you certainly do. Competitive makeup, all the things that you want with regard to makeup. With the long ball, it just continued to be his enemy here in the major leagues. Gallardo, a high fly ball center field. Milwaukee Brewers set nine to the plate. They score five times. They hit a record tying three home runs in the very first inning. Is he's yet to see how his lineup works. Southwest Airlines brings you that starting lineup. Ryan Roberts, Stephen Drew, Justin Upton. Then it's Chris Young, Miguel Montero, Kelly Johnson, Brandon Allen, Eduardo Parra. And if Barry Enright is still in this ball game, we're not sure what Gibson will be doing. Enright bats night and he can handle the bat very well too. Giovanni Gallardo is solid. The 25-year-old right-hander. Went to high school in Texas, born and raised in Mexico, and a 10-game winner this year. It's interesting to think how his ERA could ever be over four, but yet it is. He pitched a solid ball game against Arizona back on July the 6th, a three to one win. Fastball 93 gets it going. In his career against the Diamondbacks, he's a perfect 4 0 in four starts with a 1 1 3 ERA. The Diamondbacks have hit 188 against him. Strike one to Ryan Roberts. Well, folks, we're going to see just how resilient these Diamondbacks are. We've seen them late in ball games come from the clouds. But it's a lot different having to come from the clouds before you're even up to bat. But that's the case here this evening. Well, you think you had seen it all, and this is in that you think you've seen it all kind of category, but you go back to being on the road and having your pitcher, who is one of your better pitchers, give up a grand slam to the Milwaukee pitcher and Sean Markham. That's about as low as you can get, too. I mean, you think about a, 
a grand slam home run on an 0 2 pitch to a pitcher. Mm -hmm. And they came back and won that ball game. So you never say never with Kirk Gibson's team. And he's earned us saying that. I mean, truly, the, that's not just uh, PR speak. He, his, his teams have earned that this year. Hard ground ball, Bettencourt. Nice play. Oh and across, no dig off the front of the dugout. Roberts didn't make the turn towards second base. No, no worried about getting tagged there. That'll go as a base hit, I'm sure. Ryan Roberts has been red hot. One of the few Diamondbacks that's been red hot since the All Star break. They ruled that an error. Oh, that is a terrible call. That is a terrible call. How can you give that an error when you make an effort like that just to get to the ball? Is truly amazing. That is brutal. That, that's that's going to have to be changed. And I would my imagine gosh. it will. That got my ire up a little bit. I've got it written down in my scorebook, folks, as a base hit. That's a base hit, folks. No one won the count. I actually did, too. It's interesting you would say that. And I know you were on network assignment. Tony La Russa had the same kind of debate with a member of the St. Louis media about a very similar play, a diving effort, hopping up, making the throw. That one is a ground ball. That's to the right side. Ricky Weeks, a little flip, and Drew is erased. Well, our Nissan key to the game, and it's a very good one. It used to be one thing. Now it's just go for tacos. Go for tacos. Now, if folks don't know what that means, Taco Bell, they're a great partner of the Diamondbacks. Six runs, and six runs is a good thing. Six runs will give you the lead. It'll also give you three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink from four to six the following day. So six runs, the six-run giveaway, go for tacos. That's the key to the game. Sure. It was going to be all's right that ends right. Until that tough fateful inning. top of the yeah, first. That, that tough inning. Upton takes a pitch that is low, just below the knees. Anyway, La Russa was talking about a scoring decision that was made in a similar manner. A diving play. Burroughs made a diving play in an almost the exact same way. Lost his footing. Diving play. Hops up, tries to make the throw, and threw wide. And they ruled it exactly the same way. They gave Burroughs an error. Then they later switched it to a single. La Russa saying it's all one play. And that's what you're saying. Yeah, it, just to get to that ball and then... It's very, I mean, it's, you got a guy, a fast runner flying down the run. You've got to, you got to jump up and all in one motion make a throw across the diamond. That's just, it's, just, it's ridiculous. It's exactly what Tony it's said. Ridiculous. That pitch is low. Now, there was a, a member of the media, a local writer there in St. Louis, who said it's two separate plays. The diving stop is one play. And then the throw is a separate play. And I, I know the play you're talking about. The play that Burroughs had which was a much simpler play than what Unieski Betancourt just had. I mean, you've got to range five steps to your left. You dive, you're on the outfield grass, and you have to pirouette and in one motion get it across the diamond, and it gets by. That's it's not an error. Feel bad for you, Unieski. Three and one to Justin Upton. 95 miles an hour. And according to Miguel Montero, it's not just 95. It's heavy at 95. It's hard to get that good sound off the bat with Gallardo. That crack of the bat you don't hear. You hear a little bit more of a thud. Right. If Ryan Roberts gets to second base on the throw, then there's a single in an air. Right. 3-2. Breaking ball. Ground ball. Center field. Well, it doesn't matter how he got on at this point because for the Diamondbacks, they've got a run back. And that's something very positive. They hop right back off the mat and try to fight back. Let's hope for Arizona there's more than one in their arsenal. Well, what it does matter is whether that's an earned run or an unearned run. And that's a hanging breaking ball right there. Good for Justin Upton. It's been a while since he's gotten a base hit. Breaks an 0 for 15 since the All-Star break, and Ryan Roberts making things happen 
And hopefully that'll be a hit. Chip away. That's what this team has to do. And they chipped away in all of these games. It was a little bit here and a little bit there. Very well said. This is exactly what you need to do in the bottom half of your inning. Go ahead and put a scar on him early. Maybe that'll get Barry Enright some much needed confidence. Oh, and one to count. Boy, Chris Young, it's been a month and a half of consistent hitting. And when I say that, I mean really consistent stuff. You're talking about going back since June the 1st. 41 games, 45 hits, 18 walks. Since June the 1st, his on base percentage is almost 390. That's always been something people have requested in Young. Get on base a little bit more with that speed. He's done it, folks. That one up and over our head. You're with him just about every day. How has he put together six or seven really solid weeks when you speak of Chris Young? Well, he's been a guy that's always ridden the roller coaster as far as hot and cold, just enough in the same way. His highs are very high, his lows, unfortunately, very low, but he's really been much more consistent player. That's that's big time right there. Hitting in the middle of the order, too. This is not Jose Reyes or Ricky Weeks leading off. Look out. Good 0 2 pitch right there. Gallardo still just 25 years old. Last year, made 31 starts, won 14 games, had an ERA just a tick under 3.9. He struck out 200 in 185 innings. He's more than a strikeout per inning of work in his career. Breaking ball. That's one way you get on base. You hold up on pitches like that. Two and two of the count. A lot of people ask me, how did you how did you hit the curveball, Mark? I said, well, I tried not to hit it, I tried to take it. Space in right center field as they play him to pull. Belted down the line to the corner that baseball goes, but it's foul. Dropped the head on an inside pitch, didn't he? A lively inside fastball. Now let's see if he throws him that same tempting breaking ball away. Gallardo had a tough one in his last outing against the Colorado Rockies. I mean a real tough one. That was the same breaking ball, but once again he missed with it now. From an 0 2 count to a 3 2 count on Chris Young. And if you're thinking, is Justin Upton going to be running on the pitch? I would imagine with the score at 5 to 1, a strikeout pitcher and Chris Young, who will strike out, I would imagine Justin Upton going to stay put and let Chris Young go ahead and just pick something out of his own. Now, runner going. goes. Pop foul up over our head. Boy, he has fouled back some good fastballs. To Gallardo's credit on the flip side, he's coming right after him. Throwing hard. Mid 90s with the fastball. Kirk Gibson pressing the accelerator down four runs. I don't mind it. Don't ever attempt to predict Kirk Gibson. No. He's unpredictable. I like that about him. He said he doesn't subscribe to that book. Mm -hmm. Whoever wrote it. Runner goes again. Broke his bat. Look at this. Let's see if he can move up. He's going to try it. And the aggressive base running has runners on first and third. And we cannot lose track of that at bat for Chris Young. Fouling off electric fastballs, laying off sliders in the dirt, and he's got a base hit. We talk about it all the time. By fouling pitch off, is off. By staying alive. By not striking out, you give yourself a chance. A broken bat, little flare. But now because... Justin Upton's running. He gets to third base. Now the Diamondbacks with a chance to put a crooked number on the board after the Brewers put up a five spot in their top half of the first. 
great at bat, both by Justin Upton and by Chris Young back to back. And they needed that. They both had started a little bit slowly. Young started to heat up yesterday. He had a great day yesterday. Fastball, big swing for Miguel. He'll probably tell you too big of a swing. And Miguel likes to swing it hard. Let's see if he can just ease back on the throttle a little bit and go ahead and just do what he likes to do. And when he's at his best, he's he's hitting the ball to left center, to left field, and to center field. Big swing and a miss, strike two. Oh, and two the count on the young Venezuelan catcher. A well, big at bat right here. Got to get at least one. Yeah, you more. got to find a way to play Justin Upton. In on his hands, fly ball, right center field. Here comes Morgan, makes the play. Here comes Upton to the plate. He will score with the slide. Wow. I guess Nigel Morgan just decided didn't want to throw it. Thank well, you very true. much, Nigel Morgan. I mean, he made a nice play. He had a long way to run. But I mean, this ends up being a very shallow fly ball, and he just doesn't even throw it. There's the catch. No, well, I'll just concede the run. Wow. Thank you very much. If you're Miguel Montero, you get an RBI for that. You go ahead and buy Niger Morgan dinner for that one. That's one of the shallowest sack flies you'll ever see, folks. And Justin Upton once again challenging this Brewer defense. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Young That's is picked off. Time for that. That squashes some serious momentum right there. Morgan tried to keep the momentum going. Enright's going back out there to go to work. Yeah, he was trying to steal the base, no question. But what that does really squashes some momentum you had after a sack fly, a very shallow sack fly by Miguel Montero. But we said he had to put the ball in play, he put it in play, and Niger Morgan just decided, well, I'm not going to throw it. And you get a free sack fly and a free run on the board and early in the ball game, man, that's huge. Breaking ball, it's rolled out to Roberts, looks it into his glove. And the throw, boy, nearly pulled him off the bag. You stay can hear on, the Brewer dugout. Stay on that bag, Brandon Allen. But according to first base umpire Brian Rungi, he did. And Brian Rungi would be correct. Okay, Barry Enright, let's see if you can piece it back together here. Morgan slapped a single to left field. That was... 
back in the first inning. And Ryan Braun homered right behind him. Ryan Roberts is in two steps onto the cut of the grass in case he bunts. Instead, he's hitting a fly ball to center. Where Chris Young is there, and you love guys like Nigel Morgan that drop that back shoulder and try to drive it out of here. Two up, two very quick down here in the top of the second. Ryan Braun, after an F8, number eight walks to the plate. This is in the first inning. Braun takes a pitch that is outside. He's frustrated yesterday, received a lot of treatment, was hoping to play. Pinch hit on Sunday. And the funny thing about Braun, you know, you, everyone knows about his slugging, everyone knows about his homers and the batting average and how he struggled as a third baseman and has become a pretty good left fielder. But the one thing, and you were talking about his manager telling him to dial it back, I mean, he steals bases. That's another reason he can't use it. He's not stealing first that time. Very right? in right. One, two, three. He got Hart. He got Morgan. He got Braun. He did it in seven pitches. Three victories on this homestand. Tonight's text poll is brought to you by Kia. By texting the vote, fans can send to receive a message from Kia Motors of America. How many games will the Diamondbacks win? Is it five? That's just two more wins. Is it six, seven, or eight? Text to ABC or D to 36929. Good friends and partners with Kia Motors. Kelly Johnson. Takes a breaking ball that is outside. One and one the count. Well, Giovanni Gallardo threw 24 pitches in the first inning. Kelly, two of 11 on the home stand with a double and a walk. As that pitch is outside. Three and one the count. When Gallardo is right. Obviously has good secondary stuff, but he throws a lot of fastballs. And that one, he threw a bunch of them there and a leadoff walk and a good start for Kelly Johnson. It was Saturday for Brandon Allen, and it was a welcome back to the major leagues. His first home run since the Grand Slam last September. That was all she wrote offensively. That was the entire Diamondbacks offense. A one swing of the three run homer bat. Fortunately for the Diamondbacks, Ian Kennedy made that stand up. 
And here he is again, first first at bat since then, or since that night. Xavier Nady got the start, and then he got the start yesterday. As that one is popped foul, and into the seats it goes. Want to remind everyone that every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season, Fulton Homes donates $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. Allen this year in Triple A hit 306 with 18 homers, 66 batted in, and walked a lot, and an on base of 427. Slider that is high up and out of the zone. Gallardo making his 103rd Major League start. He's got 46 wins. He's got a career 3.75 ERA. Outside. Well, he's falling behind here. He walks Kelly Johnson. Now he falls behind. Brandon Allen, that's going to get a visit from Jonathan McCroy. Like, hey, you know, they've already chipped away a, a couple. Let's make these guys earn their way on base. Let's not give them free base runners with a three run lead here. Well, you see him pitching like that, and it's curious, certainly, maybe tentative from his last outing, but almost being fine. I mean, careful with that kind of stuff. With the big lead, mm -hmm. it was a big lead. That one lace to left field and there to make the play on it is Ryan Braun. I'll tell you what not a bad approach there. Not a bad approach at all. Let's take a look defensively at the Milwaukee Brewers. You saw Braun a moment ago. Morgan and Hart in the outfield. David Robleski and Associates brings you the defense. It's Casey McGee, Unieski Betancourt, Ricky Weeks and Prince Fielder. Jonathan Lucroy is behind the plate. On a pretty good left fielder, he is because he's athletic and fast, become dependable out there. He struggled his first year at third, struggled mightily. You got to find a spot for a hitter like that, and they found a spot in left field. Playing very deep out there in left field, that's the only reason he was able to snare that drive off the bat of Brandon Allen. Is that one in the dirt? Ball one. So on the money on that one, I mean that was a nice approach by Allen. Oh, absolutely. That, one, that ball was pretty. smoked to left field. He, he hit it right to the front of the track on the line. But as we said, Braun playing pretty deep out there. Ended up costing him extra bases. So he'll take that positive step with him as that one one and one the count of slider to even things up. And yeah, yeah. It is a positive step, but you're also like, golly, I want that one. Doggone it. Hit it hard, but hit it right to him. Gerardo Parra in that comfortable eight spot. It's an uncomfortable place to be assigned, but he's hit there so much he has found a way to make it his spot. That one is way outside. Hey, don't forget video audition for the Sanderson Ford Kid Caster. They'll be held tomorrow. Go to the Chase Field Plaza between five and seven. You could be the lucky kid to join us in the booth. Kid Caster. Sanderson Ford and a great combination. Two and one. Speaking of guys that make us feel like kids as casters, that gentleman always makes us smile. Bob Euchre, Valley resident in the wintertime. Runner on the move, it's fouled back. Didn't run. So we'll do it now, two and two count. Let us see Bob back to full health and making Baseball fans all over Wisconsin smile. As he has for years. Mr. Belvedere. Justin Upton's a flyer. Kent Summerfeld in the back of the booth, his longtime engineer and producer. Two balls, two strikes. They have 70 stolen bases on the year. Talking about the speed of the Diamondbacks. Brewers. The 2 2. Pitch is low. 3 and 2, the count to par. Well, I would imagine. Kurt Gibson, he's shown that he's going to be aggressive here early, trying to get back in this thing. It ended up getting a couple of runs out of Justin Upton, getting to third base, able to score on a sacrifice fly. I'm sure Kelly Johnson will be on the move. He is. That is strike three, and Parra didn't like it, thought it was below the knees. Parra, who since June 1st is hitting 
over 300, comfortably over 300. Goes down on strikes. Credit Kelly Johnson with a stolen base there. There was no throw from LaCroix. I think he was just so busy framing that pitch that he forgot to throw it. Mm -hmm. What is going on? The Brewers just don't want to throw the baseball today. That's hot out here, and I think maybe being outdoors earlier today tired their arms out. I guess. Maybe they played some day golf in the heat. Hydra Morgan didn't feel like throwing the ball to the player on that shallow pop up. Ended up being a run. And now Jonathan LaCroix. No throw and just conceding the stolen base. Now when the folks tailgate at Miller Park, and they don't get their brats out and their whole sausages and their grills and they enjoy huh? themselves. They realize that when they go inside the, the walls of Miller Park, they're not going to see a lot of good defense. I think you're right. They're going to see some homers. They're going to see off pitching. Certainly. That pitch is on the corner. One and one that counts to Barry Enright. So Enright in the big leagues, 10 of 44. He has homered. He does have a double. In the minor leagues, a 360 hitter in his career with a homer and seven RBI. So he can handle the bat all right. Gas. One and two the count. And don't you know, with what he put his team through and himself through in that first inning, that he would love to find green grass somewhere out there and drive in a run. Not interested in that one. Two and two the count. A late swing, an awkward swing, and Enright comes up empty. Base runner stranded. Five to two. You know, kind of floating out there, you know, kind of, it's just a great moment, you know, a moment that, uh, you know, growing up, you always, you know, everybody wants to hit a home run, let alone a three-run homer in the All-Star game to put the team ahead, so it was just uh, like a dream come true. Like floating on air, said Prince Fielder. And the MVP of Major League Baseball's All-Star game last week. One week ago on this day and certainly what a moment for Fielder what a moment for the National League and better yet what a moment for this city in this state. Huge swing for the big man and up into the seats it goes. Because all of you here. You put on a great show. I mean you folks here you were hospitable the the city responded. The man above responded with some very kind weather. You embraced Justin Upton Miguel Montero and Kirk Gibson. 
And you hope things go well when you are bestowed an honor like all star game host but. Well done. Popped up to the left side. One of the most dangerous home run hitters over the last five years keeps it in the ballpark. And I mean dangerous. Are you surprised? I mean this is. A who's who of power. And it's always good to see Big Adam done. Well, I can't get enough of him. And he is really having a rough go of it in Chicago this year. My goodness. We love Big Adam Dunn, but I'm not sure how much White Sox fans do. I would agree with that. Unfortunately for tough on Big Adam Dunn there. Unfortunately for Big Adam Dunn, the fans that love the slugger are Tigers fans and Royals <laughs> fans and Twins fans, they love Big Adam Dunn, unfortunately. Owen won the count for Ricky Weeks. Ricky and Prince Fielder, and I know this was reported around the All Star game as well, they have been together on different occasions, not just as pros, but also they played AAU ball together at 11 years old down in Florida. Fielder went on to sign out of high school. Weeks went on to college. That one is killed. Deep left center field. Another homer. And picture this these Brewers they brought their whooping sticks to the ballpark tonight. For Ricky Weeks. Home run number 19, RBI number 42. And an epic blast with regard to distance, by the way. That is way, way out there. Unfortunately for Barry Enright, he's kind of out there twirling it up like Robinson Cano's father. That it is and that he is unfortunately as far as that one flew. There is a comfort level for the Brewers in this ballpark and it dates back to middle of 06. Maybe early 07 where they've won a bunch of games in this ballpark. That's why what Josh Colmenter did last night. Mm -hmm. Is a credit to Colmenter. The way he attacked for whatever reason. This has not been a good matchup for Arizona against Milwaukee in this ballpark. Look at the extra base hits in this ballpark in those games. Dates back to late 06. Breaking ball is a strike. Two and two the count. 65 extra base and hits in 15 games. That's just standing in there and slugging it. And that's coming into tonight with more tonight. Oh, man. I think he got him. Yeah, he got him. Ryan Rungi rung him up. Yeah, that back just got out there a little too far for Casey McGee. Yeah, good call. In our umpire show from a couple of years back, all of the gentlemen that joined us, the men in blue, shared with us that that's a tough call. That check Absolutely swing. Absolutely, it is. That's the toughest one in baseball, they say. You no, know, because you have to crawl inside of a hitter's head. And understand intent. There's no defined laser beam line that runs from you at home plate to, let's say, Brian Rungi standing out there at first. Ted Barrett out there, Valley resident behind the plate. Brian Rungi at first, Marvin Hudson at second, and Michigander Tim McClellan is the veteran umpire at third, the crew chief. Good bunch of guys down there. One of the better crews in the game. Zach Duke warms again. Yeah, they'll give it to you, by the way, this crew. Oh, yeah. Uh, they'll stir it up. They kind of go old school, including Rungi out there at first. Now, did you ever work with his father? Oh, many times. Paul Rungi? Tell me about it. Oh, man. Paul Rungi was a tough man, just like Brian Rungi's a, a tough man as well. Paul didn't like to hear it from you. 
you had to you had to earn the right to, to even speak to Paul Rungi. Or he would just stare at you and say, and who are you? But he was also number 17, and we had that in common, and that was kind of our bond, me and Paul Rungi. So we'd all say, what's going on, 17? And he's, and Brian Rungi used to wear 71 in honor of his father. I don't think he's wearing it anymore. I think he's wearing something else. But Ed Rungi, his grandfather, a major league umpire. Call him out, Brian. There you go. Another long ball in the inning. Six to two is the score. Gibson on Ryan Roberts who leads it off from the Arizona Republic Ryan he plays all out You're gonna get a good all-out honest effort every time he was tired in the first half kind of started resting him a little bit Had the all-star break and he's come back revitalized his bats very fast Kirk Gibson talking about Ryan Roberts As that one is a strike and I think he also Endearingly called him a knucklehead didn't he Brad? What did he mean by that? Yes, he did uh, called him the knucklehead last night. He said, just like his manager, he said, you know, just he's so anxious to succeed that sometimes you know, he takes everything so literally. He'll, he'll literally, you know, go through a wall for his manager to be a part of success. And I think that's the way Kirk Gibson was. I think that's why he, uh, he has endeared himself so much to a skipper as he flies out there. But uh, knucklehead, haven't heard that one for a while. I like it. Brad, what's it like down there when the club got down five nothing? They came right back. Can you sense still a little bit of confidence, though it's waning, that they've done this? before yeah I think that's stored in their memory bank that, that they're never out of games uh, so many times this season we've seen them punched in the stomach pretty hard early on but uh, they continue to believe that they can get things done despite the fact that a lot of guys have really struggled since the break I get the sense in that dugout right there that uh, they still believe anything's possible thank you Brad those comebacks that we pointed out earlier you have to stop it now though well, and these guys also understand you it's gotten to the point where these guys play with so much confidence now especially with if they get down you got to beat us for nine innings, and it's only the third inning right now. Pitches up and in after Roberts flies out to right field. Stephen Drew grounded out to second back in the first inning. With what Drew has accomplished throughout his career, with what a special offensive player he is as a shortstop, especially with extra base hits, I think it's time to. Start asking for more in the second half from Stephen Drew. I agree. And, and I think expecting it is logical. As he waves through that one, it won't happen this time. But Stephen Drew hit 321 in April. He's not a 321 hitter. He hit 241 in May, 245 in June. And unfortunately for Drew, he's just 7 of 43 this month. He's scuffling. And he's having a tough time gauging Giovanni Gallardo. This is the guy that struck him out four times in Milwaukee. 
There's another strikeout, and he's 0 for 2 here this evening. So Gallardo certainly had Stephen Drew's number. And there's, there's just guys like that for you that you just don't pick up the ball well on or whatever it is. Do you find yourself, since we've watched Steven since 07, almost anticipating a hot streak now with him? He's always been a second-half player. He's never made an all-star team, which means he's never had a good enough first half to, to be the all-star. But at the end of the year, his, his numbers are as good or better than any shortstop in the National League. So that shows you that he's a second-half guy. So, yes, I, I, I would... Uh, Kind of jump on your bandwagon as well, Darren, and that is to expect a big second half from St uh, from Stephen Drew. If the Diamondbacks want want to catch the San Francisco Giants, they're going to have to get a big time effort from Stephen Drew. And this man too, 0 and 2, the count on Upton, breaking ball off the plate. From 0 and 2 to 2 and 2. Upton singled back in the first inning. Drove in a run with the ground ball into center field. Love it. Look at that cutie enjoying. Like she's got some fries going down there. Kind of looks good. The 2 2. Reaches out for that one, grounds it to short. Bettencourt on and cross for the out. Six to two is the score. Save some for us, please. Save, save some for Gracie and Visa, please. Cutie, please. Major Leagues. He went three, gave up seven hits, six earned runs, and the long ball was the kryptonite again. Four home runs allowed for Barry Enright. That Duke makes just the second relief appearance of his Major League career. He has been a starter and almost exclusively a starter. Our Verizon Wireless call to the bullpen. Duke's only other relief appearance was at Houston for Pittsburgh back in September of 07. Been almost four full seasons since he's worked out of the bullpen. Darren, are you as interested in what Zach Duke does here in this situation as I am? You're darn right. He could be pitching right back for that spot in the rotation. No, they, maybe they, this could be certainly another audition. And this could also a day like today, and you don't want to overreact with a guy like Kevin Towers and Kirk Gibson. That was a strike, by the way. What's going caught. on with Miguel Montero's if glove? That ball's tonight. caught. That's a strike. One and zero. The count. <laughs> he's got a that uh, he's got a Wilson skillet. The one zero. -oh. But what this does, and you look at a night like tonight. 
nights like this approaching the trading deadline affect his decisions too of course and and we say that because towers told us yesterday that the three things he's looking for are pitching pitching and pitching a lot of relief pitching a little bit of starting pitching well that might adjust his focus I mean, he may return a different phone call tonight than he would have if Barry Enright goes seven innings and give up gives up two runs very well said yeah, it's been a a tough night for all D-back fans. The 3 1 to right field. Upton tracking. Going back in it, and Justin puts it away. The southpaw, Zach Duke, the first out. Well, a trivia question is brought to you by AT&T. And you're going to love it. I hope so. Because it reads Who are the five Mexican born Major League Baseball pitchers? With 200 or more strikeouts in a season. I know one. Who is that? Fernando Valenzuela. Well done. Thank you. This man with a bat in his hand is another one, Giovanni Gallardo. Oh, very good. There's another man that pops into my head, and he was a brewer. And I, I, know think, a little bit, I think a little bit of Fernando when I think of him because they had similar styles, and that's Teddy Higuera. Pete Vukovic. Oh. oh, no. Teddy Higuera. No, Vuki. No, he's not Mexican born. Line drive, left field, base hit. Gallardo with his 10th hit of the year. He knows what he's doing up there. I mean, he is. That's a good swing. That is a everyday player swing. That's not a starting pitcher swing. So here is Corey Hart. Good Pitches. strike at the knees right there. It's a sinker. By the way, one to nothing. The Giants lead the Dodgers. One to nothing is the score. That one is Madison Bumgarner against Ruby De La Rosa, young talented Dodgers pitcher, but he's given up four hits already in the game. That game is, is that one is ouch, fouled off his leg. Bottom of inning number two. The San Francisco Giants making a move with the Houston Astros, earning a trade or working a trade, better said, for Jeff Keppinger, a very sure handed infielder who doesn't strike out much, makes pretty good contact. Keppinger is now. A member of the San Francisco Giants for a couple of minor leaguers. Into the dirt it goes. Nice Montero there by Montero. Puts his nose on it. And this one lands in front of the plate. And all he can do is just corral it just like that. Perfectly done there by Montero. Zach Duke on the fifth day of July in Milwaukee beat the Brewers went seven innings gave up two runs. A couple of walks just one strikeout but he had a very effective game Duke. A long career against Milwaukee alone. Because he was a Pittsburgh Pirate for the entirety of his career. Coming into this season. That's Perfect. strike three, just a little sinking fastball. And Corey Hart goes down. Well, he just throws a fastball in the middle of the plate, right at the bottom of the kneecaps. Strike three it is. Niger Morgan. Morgan singled and scored in the first inning. Fly to center field in the second inning. Swing and a miss at a fastball in. 0 1 the count. Roberts stays in at third. Outfield very shallow. But not too much so. 0 2 the count. Good fastball there. Right over the top of it goes Morgan. Well, why not go to school? You know what I mean? I mean, if you see an awkward swing, why not just throw the same thing? Morgan not experienced enough. And doesn't have the game to bait pitchers anyway. 
Well, there's a breaking ball. That's strike three. Somebody probably should get him his glove. Zach Duke impressive in his first inning of relief. out there on the mound. Fernando. Oliver Perez, Esteban Loaiza. Yeah, forget about Esteban yeah, Loaiza. Absolutely. And the early Oliver Perez, too, how dominating he was. It makes you wonder just what happened to him. In Pittsburgh with San Diego, he was, oh, he was so a, good. He was awesome. Got paid a lot by the Mets and decided to, well, just shut her right down. Uh, and that's a shame. I mean, it's a shame for baseball fans as good as he had been. Here's Chris Young to lead it off. Breaking ball, not a bad idea trying to reach. He'll do it again on a curveball. 0 and 1 is the count. And after scratching a couple across in the first inning, Chris Young was picked off to end the first inning, and really that kind of sent Gallardo on a bit of a roll here. No hits in the last couple innings. So let's see if Chris Young can get something started here as the Diamondbacks trail by four. Chopper and a foul ball out toward Matt Williams. And right now, with Matt's hands, that's about the only balls that he's been playing. He's real slow rollers. And a gold glover over there. Yeah. Matt's been a little lazy on those on those ground balls. You mean the firm ones? Chases up and out of the zone, and Young is done. And we kid Matt Williams, obviously. Because we love him. And Chris Young doesn't love that. He takes a high fastball. He's a strikeout victim in three pitches. Miguel Montero was given an RBI by Niger Morgan. And he also is giving away souvenirs and making folks happy with Morgan not throwing a ball in on a fly ball that he hit the very shallow center field in the first inning. Upton came on down and scored as that one is up and away. And we told you he's also giving smiles to youngsters over there. Uh, so one of the nicest young men you'll ever meet in your life, Miguel Montero. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Big rip. In game, he has that competitive nature like uh -huh. anybody else. And he's had his chirps with umpires. We've seen it. He's gotten an edge, but... He is genuine, always has a smile on his face, always has warmth, and it's, again, it's genuine. Very genuine. Loves to play baseball. And he plays it very well. And he is up there with regard to batting average. He is up there slugging the baseball. That one into right. 
play is made out there. Went down and got what looked like an off-speed pitch. Tough luck hitting right there because that was a pitch down and in. And he hit it very hard, but on a line right at Corey Hart in right field. All right, let's see if Arizona can get anything going with regard to base runners. Here's Kelly Johnson. Johnson, he walked back in the second inning, stole a base. Kind of an oh by the way sneaky stolen base. But he was stranded at second base. There's a strike over the outside corner. 0 1 the count. Attempted change up there, up and away. Century Lake high speed internet, high speed pitch with Gallardo and Enright, the two starters. 95 and 91. Another change up to missed outside two and one the count Giants have added another run they lead the Dodgers two to nothing top of the third inning. Two and two the count. Kelly leads these Diamondbacks in strikeouts with one hundred and five this year. With Sixteen home runs and fifty runs scored as a second baseman. Well, if you'll allow me, Darren, follow the Diamondbacks with MLB.com at bat 11 for your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, or your Blackberry. Live audio, video highlights, and much more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit dbacks.com for details. Big league read. Two and two of the count, I'll let you know. It's pretty good. Two and two to sneak it in on a foul ball. That's where you take yourself to the next level. That's outside three and two of the count. Are many color analysts that could sneak in a read on a foul ball? Oh, there's lots of them. No, Man. there really aren't. Well, thanks. The three two. Ooh, back to the screen swing. it goes. Got a good pitch and fouled it straight back. And this is one of those situations where go ahead and try to take a shot. You know, Kelly Johnson's got 16 home runs this year. He's a legitimate power hitter. Go ahead and take a shot right here with nobody on and two outs. Try to put a quick tally on the board. Fly ball left. At bat dragged a bit trying to catch up with that fastball. That is nine in a row set down by Gallardo. Now the youngsters having some fun out there in right field. Got it to go. Well done. Hey, don't forget all you youngsters and oldsters as well. You can talk with Todd Walsh and Joe Borowski during tomorrow's Diamondbacks game against the Brewers. Follow at Walsh Todd on Twitter. 
So you can chat during innings two through four on Wednesday. And that is always a good thing. Talk baseball while you watch baseball and get some inside perspective. At Walsh Todd on Twitter. Talk with Todd and Joe. <clears throat> can I say something? Sure. Joe, Joe's in a very odd mood tonight, guys. So I'm not really sure how the post game's going to go. But um, he, you know, he he doesn't want to have a Twitter account. But I believe that someone is going to form an account uh, called some guy from New Jersey, so he can play along in the festivities. I, I think we're going to build that, and it has to start with a grassroots campaign, as you know, because Joe just doesn't want to play along. No, well, he's a little ornery tonight. Pitchers, he is. Pitchers very. get ornery when they see. An opponent get up, get four home runs early in the ball game. Yes, they and do. And a five spot out of the gate. Yes, yes, they do. So hang in there with him, Todd. I'm doing my best, Mark. Ah, shit. Ah. Popped up to the right side. Live mic, <laughs> live TV. One out. Love those field mics. By the way, it didn't come from the booth where Todd and, no, and Joe no. are. Right? I guess he is really on the <laughs> No, no it wasn't Joe. <laughs> no, that no, wasn't Joe. Not that one. No. No, not, not that one that you heard. No. Maybe a little earlier by some guy from New Jersey at Twitter.com. See, it's not from over there. Inside corner for a strike to Prince Fielder. Into the dirt it goes. Fielder. Struck out and flied out. They value him, and he's very valuable as a player, as a player in the community, and on the free agent market. And that's where the challenge will come up. Don't you think his options are limited, Darren? Yes. Any big ticket free agent, I think their the, options are limited. The, the money that he's going to command because. By, ooh, what a whip that was. But the money he's going to command is, well, I mean, it's going to be more than Derek Jeter. It's going to be A Rodist esque. It's going to be. You know, is that a base hit? No, Herrera calls right there to Corral. But usually, those the teams that can pay the kind of money that, that Prince Fielder is going to command is. The New York Yankees, they've got a first baseman, Teixeira. The Boston Red Sox, they've got a first baseman, and Adrian Gonzalez. The Chicago Cubs come to mind, don't they? Mm-hmm. They certainly come what to mind. What about the Los Angeles Angels of yes. Anaheim? They can pay that kind of money. An emphatic yes. The Dodgers used to be able to pay that kind of money, not anymore. No. The New York Mets used to be able to pay that kind of money, not anymore. So I would imagine it's... There's only, and Albert Pujols is also a free agent at the end of this season. What about the St. Louis Cardinals if they don't re-sign Albert Pujols? Well, they're going to have to pay just as much money to, to this guy. For a younger player. True. True. So it's just it, because of, because, because you're so doggone good, your options are limited. Does that make sense? Makes all the sense in the world. That one is over the inside corner. Good looking pitch there to Ricky Weeks. San Francisco can pay that kind of money. On the outside corner, good looking pitch. Yes, they can. Texas Rangers can pay that kind of money. Oh, that's a thought. Pitch is low. That's scary to think about. That with that offense already in that ballpark, that home run ballpark. The Atlanta Braves. They like that kid Freddie Freeman, though. I don't know if that's the Braves' speed. That pitch is outside. It's ball four. Not the Braves' speed. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't see the Braves signing a major free agent to a long-term deal anytime soon. I really don't. Okay. I can't think if they have. 
They've rewarded pitchers that they have signed. Greg Maddox's deal was what four years, and then a, right. I don't see a seven-year, hundred something, two hundred okay. something million dollar deal for the Atlanta Braves. I'm just kind of thinking out loud with you. I like the Angels more than any team that you've Dude. mentioned because it looks like Kendrick Morales is. Well, my goodness, let's hope it's not true. But this is going to be going on two years. He's going to miss. Young man Trumbull doing a great job uh -huh. out there. Big time power. Philadelphia Phillies have Ryan Howard. They can pay. Pitch is low to Casey McGee. One and oh the count. Milwaukee leads it six to two. And the pitch All of a sudden is now the Plates jumping around a little bit on Zach Duke after retiring Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder. A walk to Rick, Ricky Weeks and now falls behind Casey McGee. That pitch is low, three and zero oh the count. So. Charles Nagy, one of those nights for the pitching coach, for the manager. He just kind of has to roll aids and the Pepto Bismol around. And you pull for your guys because you know the effort is there. The results are not tonight, though. Casey right back through the box. Diving play, Johnson. With a backhanded flip. What a play by Diamondback second baseman Kelly Johnson. Maybe this will create a little bit of momentum on the offensive side. Glad to have you back downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Chase Field indoors. Nigel Morgan moves to left field. Carlos Gomez moves to center field. And that'll do it for Ryan Braun. As his manager told us before the game, he wanted to test the calf, see if he was all right. And Braun will go and get some treatment, start again for the next couple yeah, of days. Go and hopefully. And hit a, go and hit a two run homer and take it on in. That's exactly right. I wish I could have done that. 
Don't sell yourself short, Gracie. Come on now. No, I never had a night like that. Big swing, Allen. Make sure to get Saturday. I'm sorry. I'm going to start this all over. Make sure to get to Saturday's game against the Rockies. The first 15,000 fans will take home a D-backs baseball cap courtesy of Gila River Casinos. For tickets, call 602-462-4790 or visit dbacks.com slash homestand. That was not a big league read. Well, you try to squeeze it in. It's tough between pitches. Yeah, the order was working fast. Oh, oh boy. That was That's leaving fast. Is it fair? Is it foul? That is fair. And that is gone. That's the longest home run I've ever seen to right field here, folks. Way out of here. That is the longest home run I've ever seen to right field here. Trust me, folks, they're going to be talking about this one for years to come. $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. That is a Fulton Holmes homer. Golly. Well, we didn't see where it landed, unfortunately. Well, it went really far. 0-1 oh, the count. Gerardo Parra. Golly. Got to be a good umpire when a ball sails 15, 20 feet higher than the foul pole to know how to rule it. That was our good friend Brian Rungi on that call. That one dwarfed the foul pole. Here we go. Let's follow it. I've never seen a ball hit up hit up there rattling in the beams up there in right field. <laughs> That's the equivalent of going over Friday front Friday's front row in left field folks. But that was over the sweets. Yes, over the sweets. Yeah, it rattled in the beams out there and down the right field line. Every ounce Way of out seats there, like I mean, out in that area. Right out in there. <laughs> Brandon Allen going to the power game since his recall from Reno. Oh my goodness. Over their heads, folks. Six to three is the score. Para goes down on strikes. <laughs> Diamondbacks are right back in this thing now. Kind of been the M.O., hasn't it? Long homers that have yeah. gotten them back in the right direction. Willie Mopeña is not here anymore, unfortunately. But he was, when he hit them, they were fun to watch. And they were in these scenarios a couple of times. Down by a bunch. All right, we can do it. We can do it. Forward to seeing Willie Mo back again at some point. Look at it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have not seen. Well, and I got here in 2001. I have not seen a ball go that far. And I played against Barry Bonds, and never have I seen a ball go that far to right field. Jack Duke hits it hard. It's out to short. Whoa! Whoa his high tag is made. An awful throw by Betancourt with the pitcher running, but Prince Fielder bailed him out. Let's see what other angles we have for you, Gracie, and folks at home. There we go. Mercy. Wow. I mean, down that line, you remember a couple of years back, is... Where we'd gather some Diamondbacks fans together, some fun and crazy Diamondbacks sure. fans in the redhead section. It was sure. kind of in that area right up above the stub hub sign and right past the bullpen. And when you stood out there and we'd talk to fans and do our open out there, it was a long way away. He hit it 100 feet in the air over yeah. that section. I don't think Willie Moe had, had that kind of pop. Boom! Brandon Allen, introduce yourself. 
to Yavani Gallardo. During today's game, receive a coupon for huge savings, prize, fresh food, famous low prices. Kia Motors. To learn more, visit PHXKia.com. First pitch, 1-0 and oh the count. It misses to Unieski Betancourt. That had us talking, certainly the homer, and now you got to have a lockdown inning. Get it there, Brandon. Oh. Bettencourt gets new life. That's all right. It went foul. You hit a really long homer. I'd love to see the distance on that. And those tail of the tapes, those. Very inaccurate websites probably going to give that about 410 feet when that was more like mm. 600. I think they'll give it. How far is it down the line down there? Remind me. 330, 335, I think, down the right field line. Give me a guess. I mean, a minimum of what, 460, 450? I'm guessing 485. 485, okay. It should be. It won't, they won't do it because. Well, now well, they're always wrong. Now come on now. Let's uh, buck up over there sitting to my right. You never know. That one is knocked down by Duke. Kelly was going the other way. Tough break because Duke knocked it down. Kelly was headed to behind the bag where it was going, and then he had to double spin back around. So that's a base hit for Unieski Betancourt. Just a line drive. Zach Duke's seen line drives, especially. Get that pitching hand out of there. That's the one that got broken in spring training. Mm -hmm. But that got the glove hand, fortunately. And he'll live to pitch another batter. Again, how far did you guess for Allen? 485. So the longest home run in the big leagues this year is Prince Fielder at 486. Longest home run in the big leagues this year. I like it. It's Prince Fielder at 486. That one went further. Number two is Justin Upton at 478. And I believe that was the Fatburger homer, if I'm not mistaken. Quite possibly. 478 feet. So those are the two longest homers of the year. Oh, I know. That, number thing was, one. that thing was rattling in the beams in the upper deck in right field. That doesn't happen here. I mean, he almost got it to that upper deck. Long run for the aforementioned. Upton with a slide. He won't get there. The old college try for the right fielder, but he comes up empty. Good effort there by Upton. Well, 
I know it's a troubling thing to do folks to root for the Dodgers but we're asking you to do so and if you're rooting for the Dodgers right now you're you're in a good mood as the L.A. Dodgers lead the Giants three to two. Madison Bumgarner's given up three. Now this is the first time that I can really say it's always a great night when the Dodgers lose. Well it wouldn't be tonight. No no you can't say that tonight. Dang it. I know it troubles you. I feel for call picking a good time to drive in a couple of runs. Tony Gwynn Jr. with an RBI as well. Breaking ball plays it on the hop. Can he recover? Yeah. And everybody's safe. A hard hit ball. Roberts couldn't make the play. And so a couple of runners on. That'll probably go as an error. But <laughs> it's a hit. And Unieski Betancourt. Ryan, well, Ryan Roberts gets, well, he gets hosed twice by the official score. In the first inning, he he was given an, the ball that he was hit was given was ruled an error and it cost him a base hit. Now they give that a hit when he'll tell you that that, that should be an error. So I don't know what's going on over there. We've got you've got to clean this inning up. Gallardo will be bunting. Part of the chip away stories we've told you about this year is that pitch misses outside. Part of the chip away, and I can recall Gracie and I talking on all the post game shows after the three big come from behind wins. There's two parts: you chipped away offensively, and your bullpen stopped the bleeding. Two parts to every come from behind story. You can't be allowing, you know, an extra run, an extra two, exactly an extra right. three. So far, Zach Duke has put two zeros on the board. Now, going to be a lot more difficult to do here with first and second. Nobody out. Gallardo going to give him a free out here by bunting. He got the wheel play on. He's swinging. Oh. Ruiz vocal tonight down there. One and one the count. Well Ryan Roberts that'll, went down in a pile that'll, there. That'll scare you. Still creeping in and a lot of room in left center field. That one bounces in there. Two and one the count. Looked like a change up there. Matt Williams relays the bunt defense signal to Roberts, who shares it with the rest of the infield. I've never really understood the pitcher's portion of it. Pitchers can read signs too. But they they're so focused in on trying to get the hitter that they just a lot of times will just look right through the third base. Bunted that one foul did him a break there Roberts was staying home that meant Duke had to go to the line on that bunt play. That was a great shot of Joe Saunders off to Matt Williams left watching. The sign watching the reaction of the defense and kind of playing along with. Two and two the count. Hart waits on deck. Three Zach, and two. Zach Duke has to throw a strike here. Or this game could easily get away from the Arizona Diamondbacks.
Surprised that play didn't work. Certainly a design play as the shortstop heads to third. The hope is that as he heads, the base runner heads with him a bit, cheats. Second baseman get a pickoff. Ball four. Well, that is trouble now for Zach Duke and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Big trouble. Corey Hart homered back in the first inning. He grounded out the third in the second inning, struck out looking in the fourth. Well, now a big meeting on the mound. Everybody but Kelly Johnson going to go into the mound and talk about things. Kelly Johnson says, Yeah, you guys just go ahead. I'll stay out here at my position. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Well, Drew can let Johnson know if, in fact, there is a shakeup in the signs. They communicate with one another. So Kelly opting not to attend the meeting. He sent his representative, yes. Stephen Drew, instead. And that's going to be all it looks like for Zach Duke. Well, Yancey Brazabon, you have just inherited a mess, and hopefully you'll have the ability to clean it up. Gibson may be taking his time here. We'll see. Bobby Freeman, take us to break. Takes the rock and he rolls. And he does so with the bases loaded. His sixth appearance since coming back to the major leagues. At the plate, right fielder, Colby Hart. And first batter efficiency is going to have to be incredibly efficient right out of the gates. Boy, and then some. As he inherits it, a bases loaded situation single, single, and a walk to the pitcher. That's frustrating. And now Corey Hart. Six foot six inch slugger takes a slider that hangs over the inside corner, but it grabs strike one, and that's all that matters. Well, anytime you can throw a slider for strike one, all of a sudden now you are in possession of the hammer. Now you can use anything in your arsenal fastball, slider, split finger. Another. Another slider. And a good one. The first slider, not a pretty one, but when it was a strike, the second one, a dandy. Yancey, 31 years old, out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. 
began his career as a Yankees amateur free agent signee and that one is fouled off. We threw a good pitch there. Hart was able to spoil. Went with the high fastball there. After a couple of sliders and he was thinking Hart was looking for the slider and Hart was just able to scrape it foul and make him try again. And it's been essentially watching Brazuban. It's been essentially fastball slider. It's ready with that grip. That's a slider grip as it misses outside. One and two the count. Razaban has inherited just two runners this year in his brief time with the Diamondbacks. Both have scored. Well, he inherits three here this evening. Ontario had to talk with Brazabon about the situation. Well, as crisp as uh, last night's ball game was. This one's been more like chewing on cardboard. Different feel. But you still feel that these Diamondbacks can grab one of those ugly wins if Brazabon can pull a miracle off here in this inning. Still feel a comeback is possible. A little chopper and it's a foul ball. By the way, for you casual baseball fans, Montero visiting with a runner on second. If he had seen something and he was changing up the signs with Brazabon, one of those middle infielders would have need to have been there. That's exactly and would have right. need to have known. So what they were talking about was only how to deal with Hart. Well, you've got a catcher on second base. That knows all about those sign sequences and whatnot. All of a sudden now two and two and Brazabon needs to throw a strike. Does it still go on? Picking up signs yeah, absolutely. and sequences. I would and hope it does. I would hope it does. It's part of the game. Corner infielders in. Middle infielders playing for the double play ball. Two two. Into the dirt, my goodness. Oh and two now to three and two. And he's fortunate to have stopped that ball. As a catcher, you can never tell yourself, well, I'll be ready to block this fastball in the dirt. It doesn't happen. Well, go ahead and throw your slider here, Yancey. See if you can get that strike out. The 3 2. Outside, he walked in a run. So another run for the Milwaukee Brewers. A bases loaded walk from the right arm of Yancey Brazabon. And, and that you know, just can't happen. You know, that that just can't happen. Frustrated about that. Get to 0 and 2, and then you end up throwing four straight wide ones when you give them a free run. Now you're starting to get into the meat of the order. Now the Brewers can pretty much put this away, unless, like you said, Brazabon decides to pull off a miracle. It's looking worse and worse now. And Nigel Morgan hit with a fastball in, and another run scores. That immediately gets Charles Nagy on the phone. Somebody's got to get up because Brazabon's all over the place. And somebody needs to get up in a hurry. Carlos Gomez came on. Micah Owings warming in the pen. Interesting with Mike Owen. You talk about kind of positioning. Zach Duke with a chance with regard to positioning and Barry Enright with his struggles. Mike Owens, I would imagine, when he works, kind of always the second choice in situations, probably thinking, I'd love to be the first choice soon. Well, he's really done nothing to be out of the conversation, has he? Yeah, but usually the one of the newest kids on the block, Yancey Brazabon, is almost always chosen over him. Into the dirt it goes. 1 and 0. The count. Just a tough night for Brazabon. He doesn't appear to have it. 
got out of the gate nicely with a couple of sliders and then I mean nothing near the plate. Pitches outside 2 and 0 the count. The 2 0. Boy, a home run cut on that one. There's a young man pitching down in double A by the name of Ryan Cook, who has done very good work for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And there are rumors swirling around that Cook may be coming to the big leagues and soon. As that one is outside, three and one the count. One of his minor league counterparts put out on Twitter congratulating Ryan Cook. Really? And saying he was headed to the big leagues. Kirk Gibson saying before the game, he's not on my lineup sheet that I'm handing to the umpires today. Maybe his minor league teammates knows more than not, more than we do. The three one. Three and two the count. 34 games for the right handed pitcher in double a mobile a very hard thrower has hit triple digits in the minor leagues this year. And pitching out of the bullpen young man out of USC this is the first year he's been a, a reliever. Middle round draft pick but it has gone from the starter. And has gone into the bullpen and done good work so we'll see. Outside ball four. And I just don't know how much more of this that Kirk Gibson can take. And he's going to have to go get Bravs upon him. Unfortunately, has basically upchucked all over Chase Field. Gibson makes the move. Micah Owings trying to make make himself an earlier choice in these situations. Major League debut. How about on this date? Some memorable players, certainly legendary players. Bob Feller in 1936 and Tony Gwynn. Look at the young Tony Gwynn. His son Tony Jr. just in town with the Dodgers. Look forward to seeing Tony when we head back out to San Diego. Micah Owings this year, an ERA of below three, 2.96. And there's the still nobody out. Strike with nobody out and the base is loaded. Micah inherits three. Hard walked. Morgan drilled. 
Gomez walked. Fielder right back to the screen it goes. Micah in the month of July has allowed just one run in five appearances. And a couple of nice starts for the Diamondbacks. Kind of pressed into that duty. No decision. Beat Minnesota and then beat Colorado. Went five innings. Gave up one run in Coors Field. Since then's worked out of the bullpen. Fielder chases a fastball up and still manages to nearly have home run distance on still it. Still a really good 0-2 pitch, wasn't it? He's got the jump. Uh huh. There's that hard to gets those high jump. swings. You're right. Out of Tulane, pitched at Georgia Tech. Micah did before he pitched at Tulane. Went to Forsyth Jenner Central High School in Gainesville, Georgia. They've seen each other before. Prince has had a lot of success. 0 and 2 of the count. Mike is still just 28 years old and we've shared with you before there were a handful of clubs when he was let go by Cincinnati this winter that said we'd love to sign you put you in double A and let you work on hitting play a position. He said, I still he think I can took pitch. that personal didn't he? Yeah, he did. He said I still think I can pitch in the big leagues. Fielder high fly left field down the line again and wow. I think Carr thought he was there. That ball could have been caught. I think Parra thought he had run out of room. Well, a lot of times you're thinking, well, if I catch it, it's going to be a sacrifice fly. I don't think that was the case there. I think he just uh, pulled up. The outs are at a premium right now. Fun little battle going on between these two. Nine three, the O two it just keeps hanging around. We well, showed you Tony Gwynn a moment ago. Fielder, a slugger, but he took a Tony Gwynn swing. Kind of foul that one off, didn't yeah, he? Just hanging around. Good for him. Well, and that's what everyone says about Prince Fielder, his manager, his teammates, that he could be down nine to three, up nineteen to three, never gives an at bat away. Never. Bouncing ball, Micah makes the play. To first, double play, Owens. Hey, these fans have something to cheer about, and they're glad to cheer. Out of their seats they come. Good for them. And good for Micah. He won that battle. That's the most productive player in the National League right there. What a snare. And then a strike and a strike. One, two, three, double play. Really nice play. Good athletic play there by Micah Owings. And now Ricky Weeks. Weeks with a long home run. Back in the third inning. Right there. Strike over the inside corner. Runners on second and third. Two outs now. Love writing it in your book. A one, two, three double play. Over to the outside corner. So far this year, Owings has inherited seven runners. None of them have scored. There it is. Hot shot. He has inherited ten this season, and none of them have scored. All you young pitchers out there, if you want to avoid innings like this, throw strikes. He'd love to be the first choice next time.
Hastings. Our game summary is brought to you by our good friends and partners with Land Rover. Home runs early. Home runs often. Hart. Braun. Betancourt. Weeks. All off of Barry Enright. Something to talk about, though, is this one from Brandon Allen. Off the lower tier of the upper deck. Off the girder is below the upper deck in right field. A jaw-dropping home run. That's a little bit of what has gone on. Then things got out of control in the last half inning. How about the job by Micah Owens? Kind of the forgotten man out in the bullpen, if you ask me, Darren. I'm hoping he's... And I'm sure he's hoping, I'll speak for him, earning some more trust. Well, that was impressive what he just did. Well, can you argue with 10 overall inherited no. runners and none scored? Clean up, clean, just came in and cleaned up an ugly, ugly mess. Getting a double play off the bat of Prince Fielder. And the other all-star in the home run derby, Ricky Weeks. Steven Drew yeah. continues to struggle with Gallardo. By the way, we we're talking about that Brandon Allen homer. Brad, where are you? Are you near where it might have gone? <laughs> Roughly in the vicinity. I'm on the upper concourse right here, and it's interesting. We've seen some mammoth shots here at Chase Field this year. Just nothing sent anyone to Fatburger. But the people up here said it landed just a little bit below me and then went straight down. There's a little mark over here that says it's 430 feet from home plate but I have to think that when hit tracker comes out tomorrow it's going to be much much farther than that because it came so high I think Adam Dunn is credited with the longest home run in Chase Field history I'm almost eye level right now to the scoreboard and I've wow. got to think that's going to come pretty close to that it was just an epic shot from Brandon Allen Brad, what does it look like from up there? I mean, does it look a long ways away? <laughs> yeah, it does. Home, I, uh, plate, home plate's a long who, ways who, away. Who's at the plate it? right now? I can't even see them from here. But, uh, you know, the drop down is a little uh, is a little frightening. But uh, everyone up here, and I went to the suites below, they really didn't see it come in. But the people up here said that it came just below them and, like I said, went straight down. But uh, no one here that I've talked to has seen anything close to the distance that Brandon Allen was able to wallop that ball. Wallop, that's a good word, Brad. You ever hear Brad do the old-fashioned 1920 <laughs> sports reporter? It's, it's one of the funniest and most <laughs> yeah. creative things I've ever heard. <laughs> we need you up there with kind of the old chapeau with the press <laughs> right exactly. there. Yes, yes. Any report uh, you can do for us? And in the that boys son? are playing with vim and vigor. Let's hope that Gibby's boys get back in this game. See, that's what I'm talking about. Well done. Yeah, yeah thank you. Well, he needs to be in black and white when he does yeah, that. Well, yeah, we're working on that. So, Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> two and two the count. Thank you, Brad. Very, very good stuff. He can get going on a, on a report and do wrapping it all up oh, with all hilarious. the fun old school 1920s words. Is this headed to center field? You bet it is for up to what a great approach. If only, if only, if only there weren't that fateful three more runs in the top of the sixth inning that scored. If only. Yeah. I mean, it just makes it tougher to have one of those comebacks that you've had. As we said, the equation in a comeback is. Timely hitting, chipping away, and good relief pitching. Now let's see if the Diamondbacks can find their way back. I'm, I'm going glass half full, Darren Sutton. You're believing. Well, well sure. Right. Okay, I like it. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you 100%. Like see if they can add to those four hits they have in the ball game. Oh, it won the count. They can do it. Vim and Vigor. Wallop. Vim and Vigor. We might have a little surprise for you in that area here in a bit. We're working on something. High production value. For the folks at home, really. Not as much for you. You're kind of second, second tier to them. Oh, I know. One and two, the count to Chris Young. You got to believe there's no doubt this club has given you reason to all year long. But the one thing that I just wish is that Yancey Brazabon. Oh. oh, boy. The one, too. And when you follow baseball, you learned a lesson in that last half inning. 
don't use ERA to gauge a relief pitcher. Just don't do it because it's misleading. Nancy Brazabon's ERA in that inning was zero. Oh, Zach Duke's run scored. None. And Nancy Brazabon's run scored. You're up, pal. You ready? Oh, get your tickets today for this weekend's games against the Rockies. Enjoy the games with a D-backs Pepsi Max value pack. For just 19 bucks, get a lower-level bleacher ticket, a regular-sized hot dog, a 24-ounce Pepsi, and a bottle of Pepsi Max. Call 602-462-4787 or visit dbacks.com slash value. Good read. Great shot of that good-looking young man. That is great. Just wipe it on your shirt there. That a boy. That's what washing machines are for. That's what laundry's for. That pitch over the outside corner. Well, he's loving that popcorn. You like popcorn. You're a oh, popcorn man. guy. Where do you like to go here at the ballpark? Oh, cactus corn down on the down on the main level there, right behind the home plate. Oh, best corn in the world. Look at this dude. Miguel Montero gives it a ride into the corner. The play is made. An old school walk to break. Back to the 1920s, Brad. Well, that's right. When well, the hometown nine tries to stop these Marauders through walking, we come back. It's all in beautiful black and white here on Fox Sports Arizona. Back in a bit. Of our partnership with Gila River Casinos. And we love Kachinko. Find out how you can learn how to play right here at Chase Field by going to the interactive kiosk near Section 111 during regular season home games. And there's a winner every time. Gila River Casinos. Bouncing ball in the left field. It's a base hit for Casey McGee, who has two hits in this ballpark. Came in as a 500 career hitter in this ballpark. Coming into the series, had an 0 for last night, goes back to the, his 500 ways, and he's 2 for 4. He needs a good series. As a matter of fact, with the way McGee has started the season, he needs a good about month and a half to get back on track. I'm a fan of Casey McGee. I like him as a as a young man, and like him as a player. He's just a much better hitter than what he's done this year. I think he's probably lost some confidence. Reminds you of a guy that's not too far from him playing second base for the Diamondbacks and Kelly Johnson. Who went into one of those tail spins that average wise has mm -hmm. never recovered from. He's hit some homers. Steven Drew's going through it right now. One and oh the county Inieski Betancourt. Yes. But you can't help but find yourself now pulling for Owings to continue to stay clean with regard to his work after what he got his teammates out of in the last half or the last full inning ago. Well, I think he's he's trying to earn a little respect. He's trying to earn his manager's confidence. It's 
coming back our way and it ends up down below souvenir for the fans here at the ballpark. Mr. Garrett Jolt and his lovely wife Audrey here at the game. One of the true treats isn't it folks on Saturday nights when he fills in for Gracie. Another one popped up. Mike is saying I'm a good athlete. Yeah there Micah. Brand is saying I'm a first baseman. <laughs> you might be a good athlete but I'm a first baseman. And you declined the right to play a position. Let me make that catch. But this is it you know when it goes up hey it's my baseball. I got it. I got it until somebody calls you off. That's good communication Brandon Allen. Calls him off makes the play. You make a good point because he made such a great defensive play on the comeback or he is a good athlete and you'd rather have that than a pitcher that runs for a hole to jump into at exactly. that point. I, Mike is one of those guys you could put him out in left or right field you could probably put him at second base or third base and he'd be just fine. Which is outside from Owings. I mean if you really needed him in an emergency you could probably put him in the outfield or put him at first base. Something like that. And probably not lose a beat. Two and oh the count to Lucroy. He's got a couple of hits in the ball game. He's got a run scored. High fly ball, very shella center field. Not too shella for Chris Young to make the play. Here is Craig Council. I would imagine with the score being what it is and certainly a Brewers kind of night, these fans will have no problem cheering a former Diamondback. And good for these knowledgeable fans that appreciate what this young man did. He's not so young anymore, he's younger than me. Did some great things in the Diamondback uniform. One and oh the count to Craig. The Cardinals remember him in game three of the NLDS. Bounces that one. You know what he wants to remember right now. He just wants to remember getting the hit. He is hitless in his last 32 at bats. Yeah, it's been a rough go for Council this season. Comes into the game hitting a buck 63. Terrific teammate. And Charles was on the mound when Council scored the winning run for the mm -hmm. Florida Marlins before he was a Diamondback. Council, as soon as he hangs up the spikes, yeah. He'll probably stay in uniform as a coach and eventually a manager. We had that discussion before the game today, and I certainly wasn't trying to hurry him. But he was glad to talk about it. And that one is rolled out to Allen. Bobbles and to the bag he goes. So the struggles continue for Craig Council. Micah Owings, another zero, earning more trust and respect from his manager.
Diamondbacks Live presented by CenturyLink. Todd Walsh and Joe Borowski and Joe. These games aren't easy to play in, I'm sure. They were very hard to uh, dissect on a, a post-game show like we're about to. But I think we have to start, don't we, with Barry Enright. You talked about what you wanted to see. You didn't see it, did you? No, not at all. I talked earlier about what Barry Enright had to do in order to be successful at this level. I'll show them how the Brewers executed their game plan against Barry Enright and how they got from his mistake. All right, that's coming up in about four hours from now, guys. We'll send it back <laughs> to you. Plenty of baseball left. Well, you certainly hope not. But then again, if it means that this club will rally and come back and score six more, we will be glad not. to hang out for four more hours, four plus. Marco Estrada goes to work for the 28th time this year. Crowd cheering a young man who took his 15 minutes of moments of fame and danced all over the upper deck. Folks wanted to have fun. You know, you feel these crowds, especially in the second half, and the one thing that they share in common is that these folks weren't people who were given seats or took seats or took tickets. These folks, no matter if it was the higher numbers over the weekend or what we've seen here during the week, they really want to be here. These have been noise-wise and energy and enthusiasm-wise good crowds. And why wouldn't you expect some energy, support, and noise for what this team has done? Yeah, those lovely ladies wearing the colors as Estrada pours in strike one to Kelly Johnson. Nice little breaking ball, but it's outside. One and one the count. Three three is the score. The Dodgers and the Giants. That game now three three. And that one is in the bottom half of inning number six. Big Kenley Jansen's on for the Dodgers now. Madison Bumgarner still working. Good change up, but it's low two and two the count kind of find yourself be honest now at home folks. You're pulling for a Kelly Johnson homer aren't you folks. Well sure. The two two. Had him out front to him another one of those change ups that one even better. Now we find ourselves also pulling for a well for a Brandon Allen homer. Well, we saw one earlier, didn't we? It's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play. Oh, good. Never seen one that far in right field. Yeah. When you've got Justin Upton saying, oh my goodness, you hit a really long homer. So here is Brandon Allen. Oh, and one the count. 11 hits for Milwaukee and four for the Diamondbacks. Milwaukee stranded six, and Arizona just a pair. It's a nice little changeup. He does it? have a nice changeup. Takes about 15 miles an hour off of it than his fastball. There it is again. Laced right to Prince Fielder, his counterpart. Two quick outs. Barry Enright. Oh, he's swinging it good, though, isn't he, Brandon? He out? is swinging A line out to good. left, a long tape measure home run, and a line out to first. And a line out to left. I'm glad you brought that back in the conversation. Yeah. If you, if you missed it early, folks, he hit a screaming line drive to the warning track, and I mean a straight screaming line yes. the other way. I'm glad you brought that back because that was a great approach. Ryan Braun was almost playing on the track when he hit it. Enright went three innings, gave up six earned runs. Barry gave up four home runs in those three innings. That pitch is high. Zach Duke went two innings, gave up three runs. They all crossed the plate when he was out of the ball game. When Yancey Brazabon came in with the bases loaded, walked a pair, and hit a batter. Razabon unable to get anybody out. And then Mike Owings came in and got out of a bases loaded mess. Mike has gone two scoreless innings now. 
And I think that certainly has to be talked about. Micah Owens. You know, the guys that are quote unquote on the bubble as far as roster spots and Mike Owings is the one that well, just re continues to go out and put up zeros consistently. I mean, those guys, something to think about every time he works. One, two, three, go the Diamondbacks. Our fan poll is brought to you by Kia Retailers, your local Valley Kia Retailers. Well, you're thinking that you certainly are hoping better than just two more wins because the club, if they don't rally tonight, will be three and two in the first five games. And that leaves five games to play. The home run, by the way, off the bat of Brandon Allen. Very Quick estimation has come across as Joe Patterson goes to work 455 feet. Which is a bomb. Unbelievable. But that's that's wrong. It you was have further that than short. That. It was further than that. Definitely. I will Definitely. say that I, I will say this whether or not there is ever 100 percent a perfect estimate. To hit a ball down the line 455 feet <laughs> is. <laughs> If it's that's impressive. accurate, you know, whether it's 455, 480, whatever you said for, I mean, to go down the line 455. All I know is I've never seen in the 12 year, 11 years that I've been here, never seen a ball go even close to that far to right field. Never. Joe Pa comes on, and he retires Corey Hart. Here again, the home run. Goodness gracious. APS Energy All Star for that monster shot. Starting to hear from some folks at home. They think it was well over 500. I, 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 it wouldn't shock me if it was. Like I said, those, those computer situations are wrong. Well, those darn computers, they've always been wrong. You ever heard of a computer glitch and Nigel Morgan gets hit again? Well, he's taken a few. Is that a breaking ball? That was a breaking ball.
So he has been on three times today. Here is Carlos Gomez. Chris Narvison against Joe Saunders tomorrow. Couple of left handers going at it. All night games with the crew, huh? Yeah, Milwaukee on their getaway day on Thursday will travel to San Francisco. And After make a it, night game. Make it over to Sears for breakfast when they get there. <laughs> There's a fine restaurant in San Francisco that is called Sears, not the department store. It's one of my favorites. Good silver dollar pancakes at Sears. To be fair, the Brewers gave the Diamondbacks a getaway day game. Yeah, they did. Just for the sake of fair reporting. 0-2 the count. It's a great restaurant. Folks ought to try it if you ever take a trip up to the Bay Area. And I'll mention it a few more times so maybe the, the check will be picked up by the fine folks at Sears. Yeah, Joe Pa gets a swing and a miss. And Carlos Gomez goes down on strike. And this is this is this is one I want to see. Fielder against Joe Pa. And away we go. Patterson. One of the great stories this year, a rule five pick from the San Francisco Giants. Has faced tough lefties, has been in crunch situation. Swing and a miss at a slider. Oh, and one the count. Prince at 296. He is 0 for 4 in this one. Swing and a miss at another slider. <laughs> Montero is having a tough time catching the baseball. Tonight. Come on, Miggy. <laughs> Just been a tough day for all the Dodgers. One of back. those nights, isn't it? <laughs> there he goes down. down on strike. Look at Joe Patterson taking care of the great Prince Fielder. You'll get him, Miggy. Small victories tonight, folks. Fox Sports Game Connect is now available on FoxSportsArizona.com. Log on during Diamondbacks games. There's stats, there's exclusive analysis, there's live Twitter feeds. And fans can share their thoughts with the game broadcast. Check out Game Connect on FoxSportsArizona.com. Sean Burrow's going to get the bottom of the eighth started. Marco Estrada had a 1 2 3 seventh inning. Burroughs at 12 of 47 here in the major leagues, a 255 clip. 
only seven strikeouts, but has yet to walk. It's pretty amazing. One and one the count. Somebody joined us, Gracie, on D-backs booth on Twitter, interacting with our show. And it's Josh Waltrip. He's done some math on the homer. I okay. want to share his Does thoughts. Does he agree with, with me that it was further? That one is fouled off. He said, I did some math, and that home run is between 770 and 780 <laughs> feet, which well, by United well. States military standards is considered a bomb. <laughs> Well done, Josh. I like that, Josh. Well done. Got a boy. Couldn't agree with you more. Swing and a miss. Burroughs goes down on strikes. He still hadn't walked. I mean, way up there. According to Josh Waltrip, about 770 to 780 feet. I think that's closer than what, what was it? He gave it 450? Please. It's a 455. Joke. I'm with you, Brandon. Longest home run of the year. Hard hit ball, and it's a foul ball. Cody Curtis dropped us a note on D-backs booth on Twitter. He says, I'd like to give a mention for a guy who never gets the credit he deserves. Not Brandon Allen. He says Micah Owings. Ah, here, he says here. he just keeps on dealing. You're going to have to get a, get a few more looks. Cody Curtis pointing out. Micah Owens breaking ball is inside. I have another mention here on D backs booth on Twitter that. If you do have time tonight that the crow is a good movie. The O2. Well, it's a big league movie. Have you ever seen the crow, Darren? I only mentioned oh, it because man. it was mentioned. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to stay on the game, but you know that mention threw me off a bit. That is a big league movie. Whole family, family will absolutely enjoy it. Being Have reminded to stay on the game, so I'll just. Kristen do and the that. girls just snuggle up around the fire, and throw in the crow. One and two, the count to Ryan Roberts. <laughs> The one two. Whoa. Two and two the count. One thing about Ryan Roberts. <laughs> you ain't going to scare him with fastballs no. up and in. What's going on in the National League Central Division? Why does it mean so much? Well, tonight Pittsburgh shut out Cincinnati one to nothing. Again, shut them out last night two nothing. Good for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think that's a great story. The city's responding too. The two two. Are they showing up? They're showing up. That's strike three over the outside corner. Marco Estrada. Doing it, isn't he? It's gracious a lot. I mean, really good stuff. Three strikeouts in a row. By the way, the National League East possesses right now the East leader and the wild card leader in Atlanta. Atlanta, 17 games over. All right. Folks at home. Throw some karma Stephen Drew's way. Having a rough night, having a rough month. One and one the count. That one is fouled off. And those are pitches when Stephen Drew's going good. Stephen Drew hammers those. Fastball right there to hit. But they're just they've been foul balls the last month. One and two the count. Stephen 0 for 3, just 7 for 44 this month.
All right, folks, you're thinking along with him. Just throw a little karma Stevens way. Yeah, throw it her way there. Think some positive thoughts, you young yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And you turn back around, and give Stevens some love. Popped up. All right, he's hanging around. All right, Steven. The 2-2. Two -two. Oh, into Darn. the catcher's minute goes. He just struck out the side. He has struck out four in a row. We roll on. Ladies. Diamondbacks baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines new rapid rewards unlimited reward seats with no blackout dates Colorado tourism have your best summer vacation ever in Colorado plan and book today at Colorado.com CenturyLink quest is becoming CenturyLink CenturyLink your link begins here find out more at CenturyLink.com Sam Demel goes to work against Ricky Weeks. He will face Ricky Weeks, Casey McGee, and Unieski Betancourt. Demel's done fabulous work out of the bullpen. Shoulder problems cost him a portion of this season. A man out of TCU. The Connor Jackson deal last year with Oakland brought Demel here to the Diamondbacks. And he was in the minor leagues, had never been in the major leagues since that move was made. He hasn't been back to the minor leagues. Got another note, by the way, on D-backs booth on Twitter. Yeah. And Nick, I hope I say your name properly. It's Nick Verderame, I believe. I may be nowhere close. V-E-R-D-E-R-A-A-M-E. -E. And he's got a great note about the Brandon Allen homer. I'd love to hear it. I'll share in just a moment. Little number off the end of the bat. Good pitch. Slider down and away. Weeks is erased. Nick says... If Allen's home run went 455 feet, Randy Johnson is five feet eight inches tall. I like that. I like that a lot. I agree. For Demel, his last 22 times out, he's worked 16 innings and he's given up one earned run, a .56 ERA. And it was off the bat of this man standing in the box. That's exactly right. Three-run pinch homer off of him a couple of weeks ago in Milwaukee. The lone run this man. And again, if you don't gauge it only on ERA with the relief pitcher, let's tell you this. And in that time, the opponents are hitting 182 against him.
Oh, and one the count. Base hit left field. Or will play it. He recovers. And he plays it very nicely. Three hits for Casey McGee. And you are never allowed near his locker again. I will tell you something else that Casey said when he talked about getting an offer and saying that he usually does hit well in this ballpark. He said, it takes me a game or two to get warmed up. Well, I guess he was right. He's warmed up well, in this he's got ballpark. Two more games to stay warm, too. So that was my response. Good for you. It's a four game exactly. series if that's the case. Bad for Arizona. Betancourt drops the head on that one. And that one is out of here. Well, a couple of more earned runs on that ERA for Demo. And double digit offense for the Brewers. They return to form in this ballpark. Since 2007, they have hammered the baseball relentlessly outside of last night in Chase Field. 11 to 3. Now, Betancourt just dropped the head of the bat right on this baseball. Bell tied, bang. And just crushes it about 10 rows deep into the left field seats. And a very happy dugout tonight on the first base side. They have come out smoking. Five in the first inning. They just have not stopped hitting. Jonathan Lucroy. Betancourt saying, well, maybe you don't have to go get a shortstop after all. No, and he needed to make a statement like that. Rumors surrounding the Brewers that they have been looking all about for a shortstop. Demo sinks that one a little bit low. Well, Brandon Bell continues his good night back in the major leagues. He just drove in a couple of more runs. He's also homered in San Francisco, leads the Dodgers 5 to 3. Is that planking? I, I guess so, but the, the feet and the, the arms feet, are up the, in the yeah, air. Yeah, you need. Hot shot, base hit. And Sam Demel's turn to get hit very hard here tonight. Yeah, planking you need the feet down right I got caught planking up here in the in the booth the other night yeah. caught me red handed on the jumbotron that looked more like shrimping down there kind of curled up like a shrimp like bullfrogging yes got the all-star game hat Did you see that he does that's big league. it's a nice hat Homer Diamondback Josh Wilson Wilson doing good work with the bat in his hand as a Milwaukee Brewer. He's got 15 hits and 51 at bats. That's a 294 clip. Heck he's got a couple of homers as well. Outside from demo one and one the cow. Corey Hard waits on deck. Out front of a breaking ball. Para and Drew get together. Gerardo Para makes the play. As the bullpen phone rings in the background, as that ball settles into Para's glove. There's only one lefty there's, left down there. There's only one out to get in this ball game. Alberto. I get the next ball. Go ahead and get loose. <laughs> Owen won the count. Milwaukee overall this year has averaged three and a half runs per game on the road. 
been a different team offensively. They're playing like this is their home here tonight. Well, it was this guy in the batter's box, Corey Hart, who got it all started tonight with a long, long home run to lead off the ball game. And that was back on Barry Enright. The Brewers went but went on to score five in the first inning. A little topper. Foul ball it is called Montero good effort good hustle with the smile there. You get out there quick enough. Let's see. Good effort. I like the pounce. Still playing. There's that photo. I just don't know if that's planking. No, it's not considered planking. But can't give it to him. The one two. It's probably not a good idea during the game to lay in a major league dugout no. as well. I would imagine they'll. Well, that's a good way to get kicked out. Lucky of the game. still sitting here in the ballpark. Yeah, it's a good way to. Yeah. Maybe visit the security office Ooh. down the right field line. Oh, you got them locked up for that. I like no, it. Not, not necessarily locked up. Just a little talking to. Hold on, that bullpen phone's ringing again. Maybe have to get double barrel action out there. Let's get the right hander up. It's been a strange game, folks. It's had us confused. I'm sure you're right there with us. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside corner, Alberto Castillo can sit down. Tough one tonight, but coming in had won three of the first four in this home stand. They look to get back on track tomorrow against Chris Narvison. A very crafty left-hander. Joe Saunders has had a, a very nice year now at this point. It's not just a good couple of months. He's turned it into a nice season. And Zach Granke, the inexplicable, inexplainable Granke this year. Didn't have either one of those words right. Brandon Allen now Allen with a long long home run earlier if you missed it now let's let's talk a little home run derby Robinson Cano an incredible final round a record setting 12 homers this one measured at 454 feet okay Brandon Allen well down the line off the top deck 455 feet which is an out and out lie. It was much further. A little number. Willie Bloomquist pinch hits. Bloomquist hustling up the line is erased on a ground down. Looks like big Cameron Lowe out there. 
And it is on for the 49th time this year. These Brewers looking to grab three outs and pick up a win, knowing that they probably never thought they'd be saying this. Casey McGee is over at first base. Just in a full fledged conversation with Brian Runge right now. Josh Wilson is at third. Rally caps are on. Why not? Love it. It's a good looking curve ball, but it's low. And McGee continues to talk with Rungi over there. They're catching up. Brian Rungi can be quiet sometimes. He's he's chatty. Well, he caught up with him before the ball game. Bouncing ball in Bettencourt. Plays it off to the side. Fires it on over. Rungi says he's out. Yeah, Brian Rungi, his father Paul, stopped by the booth, paid us a visit. He's been a Rungi umpiring baseball for probably about 75 years. Darren. Ed, his granddad. Of course, Paul for all those years, and now Brian taking over. We've run into him in the tunnel a couple of times in different ballparks, different cities. He's one of our favorites. Miguel Montero. Not done yet, these Diamondbacks. Right through the shift. They had shifted on around. And for Miguel, that's his first hit of the ball game. He also had a sack line and RBI back in the first inning. He will finish tonight one of three if he doesn't hit again. And here is Kelly Johnson. Johnson walked and stole a base back in the second inning. What we got there? What country flag was that? The Venezuelan flag, I ah. believe, isn't it? Was that for Cameron Lowe or Kelly Johnson? I would imagine that's for Miguel Montero. Oh, who just got that oh hit. okay. Okay. I got you. Kelly's from Texas. <laughs> Kelly hits it hard. This should go. Ricky Weeks to Casey McGee. The Brewers offense arrived tonight. And more than enough support for Giovanni Gallardo. A tough night for Enright. A tough night for Yancey Brazabon as well out of the bullpen. We'll see what the future holds for both. Let's get on and out to the post game show. A lot to talk about. A lot of offense, too, for the Milwaukee Brewers. The post game show after this commercial break. <laughs> 